Let's start by addressing the clickbait title here. Samsara stock price plummets. Time to panic. Well, when a stock price plummets, that really depends on the context. And here on the left-hand side, you can see that shares fell rather dramatically looking at the five-day chart when the most recent earnings were released. But if you look at the middle chart here that shows the six-month returns, then it doesn't look so bad. And then if you look at the chart on the right here, that's the one-year chart for Samsara stock, you can see that it's hovering around the same price. It certainly isn't hitting new lows, but uh, it did fall 13% yesterday. And I looked at the market this morning, I think it's down two or 3%. So what does it mean when investors panic? Well, the definition is that you have sudden uncontrollable fear or anxiety, and it causes you to not think and act on impulse. So that's something we don't do. When it comes to tech stocks, there's going to be a lot of volatility. So there's only two reasons that we would ever sell a tech stock. The first would be if our core thesis has changed. Second would be if revenue growth stalls. And it's not always clear as to when these conditions aren't being met. So for example, Quanterix, they recently had some problems and they said, well, our revenue growth is going to stall this year and perhaps next year. That's kind of a conundrum. So does that mean that it's stalled sufficiently so that we would sell the stock? Well, that's another conversation, but you can see that sometimes things are not so clear and you have to decide how much time you're going to give a company to resume the growth. Well, Samsara certainly doesn't have any problems with their revenue growth. In fact, it's quite spectacular. And you can see here that on the left-hand side, their annual recurring revenues are increasing steadily over time and recently increasing at uh, quite a strong compound annual growth rate of 59%. On the right-hand side, you can see their quarterly revenues. And I wanted to very quickly talk about the difference between annual recurring revenues, what's also called run rate, and revenues. So this is often confusing. So here's how you can think about it. When you're doing enterprise sales, it all comes down to having a signed contract. That's when the celebrations begin. Both legal teams would have vetted that contract. That's when revenue can be recognized but not collected so then you would need to send that over to billing and depending on the terms they would then send an invoice over to the customer the customer has a certain amount of time to pay so annual recurring revenues refers to all the signed contracts at that point in time if nothing else changed if they didn't have any cancels no new customers no price increases nothing changed that's the amount of money the firm would receive every single year so it should resemble revenues. And this number is actually for the latest quarter, uh, annual recurring revenues are $660 million. So when you look at last quarter's revenues for the firm, the registered revenues in their earnings call, it was 153.5. So multiply that by four to annualize it and you have about $660 million in run rate and revenues of about 600 million. So those two numbers, are fairly close. And if there's a large gap there, then that's something that ought to be probed. But uh, it's useful to monitor both because annual recurring revenues will fall before revenues will. So that's kind of a leading indicator. So revenue growth has installed for Samsara. When it comes to our core thesis, that certainly hasn't changed. So the last time that we checked in with the firm, and if you want to know more about the opportunity, perhaps some of the uh, bull case, then you can head over to this piece we did on Samsara last year. We looked at the opportunity for connected fleets, connected sites, and connected equipment, somewhere around you know $50 billion opportunity. And Samsara is capturing market share very quickly. And what they've been able to do quite successfully is upsell existing customers. That's that's very valuable to be able to do that because it costs a lot to go out and get another customer. If you can sell something to a customer you already have, that uh, is a lot more efficient uh, usage of your resources. So here you can see over time how 
The number of customers spending at least $100,000 has increased. So this chart was taken from their investor deck. Uh, so this would have been the first quarter of fiscal 2023, almost 900 customers paying more than 100K. And on the right-hand side here, this is pretty important because it shows the ability for their platform to scale in large organizations. So you have what? They have 34 customers that are paying uh, $1 million in annual run rate uh, at least. So it's useful to watch these buckets and see customers graduate upwards. And this is often referred to as land and expand. And here's an example they give in their excellent investor deck, which shows how they have initial interest in vehicle telematics, and then they expand that into video-based safety, and pretty soon the customer's using the complete solution. So they've been able to upsell very effectively, and if you look at their annual recurring revenues that mix over time, you can see here that they have 15,000 core customers that are paying them at least $5,000 a year, and another 14,000 that are paying somewhere less than that. So. These are what you would consider leads, certainly more qualified leads because there are, they've already opened their wallets. But on the right-hand side here, you can see the mix of customers. So larger customers, let's say customers that are spending larger amounts of money are becoming uh, increasingly large percentage of overall revenues. That's great because we don't want to invest in a firm that sells a lot of widgets to a lot of companies. We want to see proof that land and expand is working. And I think for Samsara, it's quite unique because they're selling multiple products. Sure, they're related, but they are multiple product sets that provides some diversification. So perhaps you'd have a customer cancel a particular product. They're still your customer. Then you could figure out what went wrong, try to get that win back. So here you can see how 70% of their core customers, the 15,000 that are paying them at least $5,000 a year are using multiple products. 90% of customers spending 100K or more a year are using multiple products. That's great to see. So they're able to effectively cross sell and they've given some examples in the investor deck, quite good ones. The earnings call is also riddled with examples of customers saving money using the platform. It's very important. That's why we like firms such as UiPath. They save other companies money and in bear markets or bull markets, solutions like that will always sell. So here you can see where a uh, leading, looks like a utility firm started with vehicle telematics back in 2018, spending 20K a year and look, uh, fiscal year 2022, they spent $3.8 million with Samsara. So they expanded that scope beyond just tracking vehicles to equipment monitoring. On the right-hand side, you can see U.S. food distributor that had a platform for video-based safety site visibility. And then they expanded to also include equipment monitoring and look at how that increased their spend over time. So that's very useful to see that they're able to effectively cross-sell and when you look at the probably the most notable metric that measures the ability to sell more to existing clients, that's net retention rate. And for SaaS firms, let's say 122%, probably around average, somewhere upwards of 130% would be considered quite good. And you can see that for their larger customers, those paying them 100K or more, that increased net retention rate over time uh, is now uh, above 130%. And just to explain this, so going back to that concept of annual recurring revenues, if everything was frozen and you always received the same amount, that would be 100%. You received 100% of the money that the customer was paying you. If they pay you less, then net retention rate goes below 100%. And if they pay you more every year, it goes above. And there's different ways that you can tier this out. But what it shows is that they're, they're very uh, effective in upselling existing customers. And another chart that they included in their investor deck, which is quite useful, you don't often see this, is a very eloquent uh, diagram that shows the concept of customer acquisition costs. So there's a cost to get a new customer. And you can see that they've plotted that over time. And the lifetime value that they expect to get from that customer is eight times the cost of acquisition. So more sophisticated analysts will use this 
number and compare companies uh, according to this ratio. It's something that we don't use because we try to keep things very, very simple, but it's a useful chart and interesting to see. The investor deck is phenomenal and it includes, uh, well, this is from the earnings call, their most recent earnings call. Look at how effective this slide is. It shows their increase in guidance. So they actually beat expectations and um, raised their annual guidance and shares were still punished. We'll talk about why that is, but you can see this is very effective in showing how their Q2 performance was able to uh, beat the expectations of Wall Street. Uh, it shows the growth numbers along the bottom and that also contributed to their guidance change. So you could see there on the right, they had a, a small guidance change for the quarter. So very effective slides in their earnings call that show everything that you would need to feel comfortable about your investment, or at least be able to see if something's going wrong. Here's a look at breakdown of annual run rate by industry. So you can see that they're quite diversified there as well. Now, when it comes to valuations, Samsara is obviously corrected a bit and what we did here is we took our tech stock catalog. So if you're an analyzed premium annual subscriber, you can download this and do this yourselves. Go to the stock catalog, select the SaaS field and choose pure SaaS. That's the option you wanna choose. So you have that filter, then go filter on market cap, uh, $5 billion or greater. And then you get this set. So you have the companies here and the valuation ratio will be automatically calculated for you based on the latest data in our catalog. So you could see here that Samsara is, uh, wouldn't be considered overvalued, wouldn't be considered undervalued. I think the catalog average for 192 stocks that we calculate this for is about 8.3. So it, the shares could still uh, continue to correct. And I think they're low, all time low is somewhere below $10 a share. So, you know, when you're looking at investing in a firm like this, you're not uh, that, interested in what the short term share price movement is. You use dollar cost averaging and it's probably a, a decent time to add some shares. But uh, what we wanted to touch on today was something that uh, we didn't look at in our last piece and it's relevant given today's bear market survivability. So how is uh, Sam Sara positioning themselves when it comes to being able to not have to raise capital? Well, they have $826 million in cash in the books 72% gross margin for the first half of this year. That's been growing over time or say increasing. They lost 135 million so far for the first half of this year. So just back to the napkin math, they're burning 270 million a year. They have a runway of about three years. And in the earnings call, they made this comment here in response to somebody raising the, the profitability. You know, when are they gonna reach profitability question? And they said, we've got a number of projects underway to really accelerate our timeline to break even. So we'd expect to see some communication around that uh, because this company is, is very competent when it comes to investor relations. So we imagine that will be a talking point soon. But why did the shares fall 13% uh, yesterday and a couple uh, percent today? Well, they beat analyst expectations, as we said, and they raised guidance, but these comments are why shares would have fallen at least that's um what in looking at all the collateral this appears to be what caused the share price to drop they talk about things like macro headwinds elongated sales cycles economic uncertainty and when a sales cycle lengthens then that just means it takes longer to capture revenues you can see here they talk about higher levels of required deal approval totally makes sense so when i worked in the uh, enterprise uh, software company in finance when ever there was a bear market everybody knew the letter was coming from the ceo that would say all expenditures over let's say 10k any 10k line item needs to come across my desk that's very common so they will totally freeze hiring and expenditures and that's what's going on here so when you have a higher level of deal approval required. It takes longer to go up the, the food chain and get the right people's signatures. So that drags things out. You have longer trial periods. Of course, companies are trying to use the platform for free as long as possible. And this comment about intensified ROI validation, they're purchasing Samsara solution because they want to save money. And the earnings call, they um, 
peppered that with examples of their customers saving money. Customers, when they hear that promise, they want to be absolutely sure they're going to realize the sort of a return on investment that makes it worthwhile to purchase Samsara's solution. And as you can see, usually that involves starting to trial it. And over time, as it saves a firm money, they'll continue to spend more money to save more money. So um, this sort of language has uh, short term thinking analysts um, a bit worried. And as we saw today in all the key metrics, there's certainly nothing to be concerned about. So I wanted to touch real quickly on this concept of checking in with a stock. So we find the right cadence to check in with a firm we're holding is about once a year. And it's been coming up on a year since that last piece we did on Samsara. And whenever we check in with a firm, we look for four pieces of collateral, the latest 10Q or 10K, latest investor deck, uh, the deck that accompanied the most recent earnings call and a transcript of the latest earnings call because a lot of times there'll be ongoing themes that are useful to get from that. You can see here, Samsara has put all that information in a single place where we can easily get it. I don't think I've seen too many firms that will actually take a transcript and provide that. We usually have to go scrape that from uh, the Fool or a place like that, but uh, very useful. They put this all in a single place. Their investor deck is just phenomenal. and. This may be the SaaS firm that we've looked at that has the best metrics out of, out of all of them out there. And we were wondering how that could be. So we wanted to see, are they using an agency? Because our recent piece on MongoDB just uh, totally pointed out what investor relations shouldn't look like. And we've come across a fair number of firms lately that don't pay attention to the investor relations basics. Well, if you want to see a model company when it comes to how to report SaaS metrics, this is the firm to look at. And the reason for that is their head of investor relations, I believe his name is Mike Chang. Uh, this is his profile. And you can see that he left an ED job at Morgan Stanley to go over to Samsara to uh, be the vice president of corporate development and investor relations. So you can be sure he's not sitting around proofreading press releases. Uh, he's actually doing business development work and heading up investor relations. So when you have somebody of this caliber who understands what analysts are looking for, then you get quality investor relations like this. So this is a model of what proper investor relations looks like. And that's what it takes in order to get that somebody who understands the business extremely well. So just to conclude, Sam Sara shows us what good IR looks like. Uh, it appears to be business as usual for this high growth firm that's just doing a stellar job of upselling existing customers. And even though we have a uh, fairly solidified position, we may look to add some shares. And if we do that, we'll send out an alert to Nanalyze Premium subscribers. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please be sure to share it with your family and friends and click the like button because that will help spread the video around more. Thanks so much for your time.